And when you think about a character who reincarnates, why would they want to become an archaeologist? Why would he have that background? It's because he's lived all these lives and experienced all these cultures, some of which don't even exist anymore. He's taken it upon himself to preserve those cultures and to make sure that they're, the knowledge of them endures. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And this past week, a very, very high quality comic book run has come to an end in a very quiet fashion. It doesn't feel like uh, Robert Venditti's Hawkman run, which lasted 29 issues, really got the ever really got the praise or, you know, the just the adulation it probably deserved. You know, I, will, I would say since its inception, uh, it, it start, you know, other than maybe like Flash. There really hasn't been another run that's been ongoing that really touches it as far as you know the mainline DC uh, comic superheroes. And here with me to talk about that today is a man that has been with Hawkman, Robert Venditti's Hawkman from day one. Eric Brain, how you doing? I'm doing well on this slightly bittersweet occasion. Yeah, so you um, you are a man of the people. You started out on, on Hawkman and you finished up the run. Like Just general feelings, what do you think about Robert Venditti's Hawkman? As close to perfection as you're going to get. You know, Two-thirds of it was absolutely brilliant, and the other third was very, very good. Although it, you know, there was a lot that he had to work through that we will get to in a few yeah. minutes, but I, really I was, could not have been happier with the run. When it kind of went off the rails a little bit. Um, man, I do want to say, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't. Uh, and if you enjoyed Robert Venditti's Hawkman, let us know what you liked the most in the comment section. If you read this series and you thought it sucked, let us know we're a couple of boneheads. And we always want to hear, if there, is there another classic ongoing that we're not reading? Did we miss something? Let us know what you think is really good right now as well, because we, we could always use more good comics. There just aren't enough of them right now, Breen. Now, before we get into all the details of this, you, you did want to give some background information on Hawkman that will kind of um, – Explain what makes this run in particular special. Yeah, it's you know, as most people know, Hawkman was created in 1940 by Gardner Fox and was a member of the JSA back in the old All Star Comics. He was revived again in the early 60s in The Brave and the Bold. You know, this time he was Carter Hall, archaeologist with his wife, Shire, who were Thanagarian police officers who had come to earth to protect the earth. And that run lasted several years. They brought in, um, uh, I'm sorry, his run ended and they moved him over to the Adam book for the last 10 issues of his book in the sixties. And then he, from there, he went on to be a member of the, he was a member of the justice league. And really the, the only character, the main thing about his character was he was, he was kind of the conservative foil to green arrows liberal and they would banner back and forth good naturedly, but you know, they were friends, but they disagreed on just about everything. Uh, they brought him back in the eighties, starting with a miniseries called shadow war of Hawkman written by Tony Isabella, which was a very good four issue miniseries about a Thanagarian strike team that was sent to earth to, set up an invasion then that led into a 17 issue series also written by isabella that, that kind of bridged the gap between pre-crisis and post-crisis it was interesting that the character that is probably with the most convoluted continuity of anybody was basically left alone between crisis and after crisis which and after his series ended there, a couple years later, there was the Hawk World Prestige series that set him up as a Thanagarian policeman, and you know we came came to Earth as kind of you know, similar to what he was before, but almost more of a I don't want to say militaristic you take. A very well received series, and then there was another series in the '90s, and then Jeff Johns' series in the early 2000s, where this time around Hawk Girl was. A, a, a 19 year old named Kendra Saunders and they kind of played with that 
uh, you know the the reincarnation through time thing but this time she she didn't either know it or feel it so they could they never really got the two characters together and it just kind of they just ended up kind of going off in their own direction so hawkman's been through the creative ringer over the decades and it was the venditti run that finally put all the pieces together and made them fit so the the, the big uh, characters things about Hawkman is that he kind of recreate reincarnates. He was originally like an Egyptian prince, but there's been a Hawkman obviously on on um, on Thanagar. There's been a Carter Hall is, is the Hawkman on Earth. He also he has a mace. He's got uh, some wings. Sometimes they're on his back. Sometimes it's like part of his chest apparatus, depending on the writer. And he's an archaeologist. So the way I've described him, you know, reading the Jeff John series and this one, is he's like. Um, He's you know, uh, Indiana Jones, but with wings, and you know, in a better physique. Yeah, they, and they did that in the Isabella run, where he, you know, they touched on that a little bit, where because his is in his civilian identity, he was the curator of an arch of a museum in the city where they'd set up shop at Saint Roche, so that that allowed him to go look for artifacts and get in all kinds of adventures. So that's. Yeah, and and Venditti's run touched on that as well. John Jeff John's run certainly did. So getting into Venditti's run, the first twelve issues are illustrated by Brian Hitch. This is definitely for me the highlight of the series, and it definitely taps into those archaeological roots where basically Hawkman has to rediscover himself and kind of figure out things from his past, and he has to kind of revisit different incarnations of himself and he finds out that he actually reincarnates across space and time you know so he visits uh, there's a, a hawkman version of himself on krypton before it was destroyed there's a you know he, he visits the hawkman on uh, thanagar the hawkman in egypt and he kind of has to learn all these things about himself rediscover uh parts of his life obviously hawk girl is not in it at this point but along the way he learns out that he he finds that he remembers that he was the general of the Deathbringer army. And essentially, he he turns on his army once he realizes how many worlds they destroyed, and he dies, basically taking down his own army. But he's resurrected by an angelic-like figure who tells him, in order to atone for the sins of your past, you will be reincarnated as many times as it takes for you to save as many lives as you've taken. And I thought that was just a wonderful reimagining of Hawkman that really explained uh, a lot of the history and kind of tied it up together in a very cool way, in my opinion. Yeah, and he finally figured out why he has why he has been the way he is, why he's been reincarnated. It's like all this time, it's like, I why have I why do I keep living these lives? And he's able to put the pieces together I, I guess with some help from you know madame xanadu and this this the first 12 issue story arc the, the the discovery the voyage of discovering who he was and then the realization that the death bringers are coming to earth and the way the way he weaves into the story to bring back all of the other versions of him to even up the odds in the fight against Adam and the, yeah, you know, the Deathbreakers, that that was just an amazing. It's like, why didn't anybody think of that before now? <laughs> and the, the, one of the things, like when I think of like great comic stories, I love action, you know. But I don't think an action, you know, action alone can't make the story. I love great art. Great art alone can't make the make the story. But you know, when you start combining in some character moments, that's when you really got me. And, I really think Robert created a lot of character moments for Carter Hall and Hawkman. Like I remember the issue where he he went and he discovered Adam, like in like the the microverse. Yeah. It was just it was really great to see those two characters finally kind of reconnect and have a little adventure together. And that's that was a great callback to anybody that was old enough to remember the Adam series I touched on earlier. That became Adam and the Hawkman for the last ten or so issues of that run in the '60s, and that it was that that was those were two really really fun issues, especially when when you learned that in the microverse the Adam could become a colossal, a giant, and that was 
that was a neat touch. I, I did not see that coming when, you know, that two page spread where he goes, I realized I can do things a little differently here. And that was just fun. That I said, that, everything about that first 12 issue arc. I, I was talking to a friend of mine who hasn't read new comics in about 12 years. Who's very into trades. He's kind of like me, only he doesn't read the new stuff. I think I've got him talked into giving Hawkman a shot. I, I think do. anyone that loves classic heroic storytelling in comic books will love issues one through 12. It, it is three trades, but it's one story. And it, the culmination when finally the Deathbringer army arrives, Carter Hall is essentially is like, I'm one man against an entire army. I'm, I'm going to try and, you know, he feels like he's failed and it's not going to happen. Then he realizes because he discovered himself, he was actually able to bring all the prior incarnations of Hawkman into his world to fight the battle with him. It was just really exciting. And Brian Hitch just really knocked it out of the park when you see all the Hawkman in the air. They finally battle the Deathbringers. And I remember there's like this, this like an enormous Hawkman and stuff. There's a lot of fun fan service in there because you do get to see like a Kryptonian version of Hawkman and stuff. But it's just um, just a wonderfully well-executed moment, but just so well-deserved by what Ben Diddy had done for the character. Yeah, and we also forgot to mention how Shaira played into that. It explained how the two of them came together, that she w would appear to him while he was the Deathbringer. And I th I'm thinking she might have sown the seeds for him to grow a conscience to realize what he was doing was wrong. And then you know, she was basically, she's the reason why I think he became a better, a better man. Because when she said, when he said, I, I spared you now go. And she's like, Oh, you, you don't understand. You didn't save me, <laughs> you know? And, so mm -hmm. I, I thought that was a really neat touch that they you know, that set up them coming together later in the series. Yeah, so like I said, the first 12 issues, and then there's a 13th issue. It's got a new artist on it. It's a standalone one-shot, and it's a wonderful story about a war that rages on for, like, centuries, and he keeps getting killed from one side, and he's resurrected on the other side, and killed on that side, and he gets resurrected on the other side. And it's That's a really cool story. And then you're the villain happens <laughs> and it just derails the story with Robert Venditti was doing a great job. Now, I don't think every writer at DC comics embraced you're the villain the way that Robert did. And I think what he did with sky tyrant, it was well received. I personally dropped out of it. I got tired of you're the villain. Uh, this particular cover in the middle actually was one of the last straws, essentially uh, Hawkman, you know, redeemed himself by saving the world and to have a demonic, like, like devil-like figure ripping his wings off on the cover uh, infuriated me to no end. And it felt like they was doing they were doing a disservice to Robert Venditti's run and basically just throwing out everything he did. So I got pissed off and dropped off on during Year of the Villain. But by all accounts, he embraced it more than other writers and he did the best he could. Well, this would have possibly helped the book if Year of the Villain as an event had been better received. I think this was kind of DOA in a lot of quarters. And they asked him to basically turn over his book to this storyline for about eight or nine months. Yeah. yeah and I mean, to his credit... Issues 14 through 22. Yeah, to his credit, they were very good issues, but it definitely... Yeah, I said if if you're the villain had sold better, it might have given Hawkman the boost in sales that it might have needed to continue. Unfortunately, it didn't, and that's why. Yeah, I'm still got pissed off. Like, Scott after. Snyder did not need Hawkman to be one of the infected to execute that you're the villain storyline. I don't know why he decided to go grab someone else's character that they were doing transformative storytelling with and uh, re-energizing the fan base in and go and just change the character for this event. Like you said, it wasn't well received. It did nothing really for the title. It actually dropped sales. And at this point, we started getting revolving artists, and I don't think that helped either. No, at least, they, at least we did get 
a steady artist in, you know, in the last several issues. And honestly, that guy was, and I can't remember his name, unfortunately, but he, to me, was, it, if Hitch is a 10, this guy was a 9.5. Are you talking uh, about Eau Claire Albert? I know he did the last issue. That, um, if I look, uh, Passaren, possibly? Oh, That's yeah, Passaren. Yeah, um, but, you know, unfortunately, this happens in comics, especially in modern comics when everything is an event, which is unfortunate. But it, it, it would have been nice if Venditti could have been left alone to continue his story because, yeah, there of all the characters to choose from, you only need six. I guess maybe they looked at Hawkman being this, you know, angry man with a with a mace and always looked you know gruff and they thought maybe he'd be a good one of the six unfortunately like i said it, it was a testament to venditti's skill as a writer that he was able to keep the book interesting i think they chose him because he wasn't a hopeless character that he was he'd had a, a hopeful story and i don't think they could they could stand it in the dc universe to have a hopeful story you know with a positive ending you got to take the character and, and turn him into a, a you know, a demon. God, That's yeah. the way I took it. I was pissed. Wasn't wasn't Shazam one of the six? Yes. Oh, that that. So that, was Donna Troy. Yeah, your argument your argument's getting better by the name. Here, <laughs> Jim Gordon. I mean, Blue Beetle's in there, but I mean, uh, Jim Gordon. Obviously, he's a darker character, but you know, as far as Gotham goes, he might as well be. Well, who's more hopeful than someone who continues to fight for a lost cause for eighty years? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, as far as Gotham goes, he might as well, you know, he's the bright, shining light. Yeah. <laughs> well, until until so. his daughter set him straight last month. Well, yeah, she she checked his privilege. <laughs> she checked his privilege right down in the the SmackDown hotel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so pathetic, but so getting into the end of it now. After that was over, and I believe it's starting in issue twenty three up until 20, 29, it felt like he was kind of given free reign to to do some fan service. He finally, you know, brought Hawk Girl back in. We got to see him do, have a little adventure with the JSA, some things like that. And I, I feel like, besides that bump in the road, which by all accounts, Robert Venditti did the best that he could with Year of the Villain. He did better than almost every other writer with with that structure placed on him. But it felt like he got to give the character a great ending. It's just by that point, nobody was reading it anymore. Well, he, he got to go back to, we found out who the Deathbringers were working for when he introduced the Lord Beyond the Void, and he had to deal with that once and for all. And there was the issue, the way they defeated him was Hawkman and Hawkwoman gave all of their lives to him at once, and it basically overloaded him. And that's how he, they defeated the Lord beyond the void and died when they were basically, and then they were offered one more life. And I think that's when they let it slip that that angelic figure was actually God. And he said, mm -hmm. you can have one more life where you want to spend it. And they chose 1942 JSA era. And I think the twist that no one saw coming, because there was one more adventure with, with half set, that they had to get by on the train and it looked for a while like, you know, Carter was going to be like every other modern male character and, you know, cower in the shadows while his woman did, did everything better. Turned out to not be the case. That was all strategy and the way they you know, won the day was, you know, very well done. But I said the twist at the end, when we found out that one life, and if you were, I didn't notice this the first time I read it. I noticed this the second time when, when he's outlining it. Years will be days to you. And when the last page revealed that it's 2000 years later, that was one heck of a last life. And if that's, the, if that's the last time we see these characters because given the trajectory DC is on, I don't, I, I was hoping this would lead to a JSA book. I'm not very hopeful for that. I'm fine if we never see these characters again because this is the kind of send-off that characters deserve. 
The rumor is Hawkman is going to end up playing a somewhat key role in Dark Knight's death metal. We shall see. Ah, uh, well, we'll see what happens there. It's, but then again, I guess you could say this is that version of him that doesn't have any more deaths. So uh, yeah, they did. They so they he did doesn't kinda... have more lives. He doesn't get to resurrect anymore. But he's not going to die either. He gets to live right. a very long, fulfilled life. In the very end, the last pages are are he and Shiara like in, embracing each other in the future and, and you know teaching new heroes and, and, and enjoying another sunset together. I thought it was a beautiful way to let the to it was a storybook ending for a wonderful comic book couple that really deserved it. And and you see those throughout the history of comics, and they're always undone. Yeah. For obvious reasons, they're comics. I mean, that you have to keep using the characters. But I said, you know, as DC goes more towards a characters, you know, I mean, there's going to be more Batman, more Superman, more Justice League. I, you know, I don't know. At this point, I don't know who can write Hawkman and not kind of feel a little bit let down after what we just read. So if Hawkman does come back, maybe that means DC will be expanding their character you know, list again. But Well, we know Hawkman is going to be in the Black Adam movie. Yes. I assume that as part of the JSA. I think he's also limited. He's been in the, the CW Arrowverse a few, in, a, in a role, but not as prominent as some of the starring characters. Um, but overall, you know, like you said, this is near perfection. It, it did get derailed by Year the Villain which is too bad. But I do think Robert Venditti did the best he could to make the, you know, he, he took the lemons and he made lemonade. Not every other creator at DC Comics was able to do that with Year of the Villain. No, and I, and I do want to say real quick, I said when this series first came out, I read the first couple issues and I noticed that it was being promoted. They were getting full page spreads promoting it for the first two or three. Then, because this came out about the same time as the New Age of Heroes. Then DiDio mm -hmm. signed a particular three-named gentleman, and every bit of the promotional budget went into him. Hawkman promos disappeared. New Age of Heroes promos disappeared. And one of the things, when you're not writing very well-known characters or the, the the Trinity characters and their immediate you know, offshoots, it's very hard to get traction. It's been that way for as long as I've been reading comics. And it was sort of like you you knew three or four issues in, this is not going to last. So enjoy it while you have issues, it. We got 29 issues, which yeah. is a very substantial run. In modern comics, it is. Yeah. So I do want to say this. We know Robert Venditti, while he was writing Hawkman at the end, he started writing Justice League, and it appeared he was going to be the full-time Justice League writer. Then he abruptly announced that he was leaving Justice League because he had been offered – offered the opportunity of a lifetime from DC Comics, and he was going to go move to that project. I imagine that is going to be launching in March when they announced the new creative teams. We know that he was working on the Superman Giants, where those were original Superman stories that he wrote. Do you think he's doing JSA? Or do you, if he's not doing JSA, what do you think he is doing? Well, I, at first I thought he might be getting one of the two Superman books, but now I'm now hearing rumblings that that's going to be Wade. I've um, heard that the two Superman books will be written by the same writer. Yeah, and if it's if it's, and I don't I don't see them giving both of them to Venditti. Unfortunately, no, they would give him action in a bigger profile writer, Superman. Unfortunately, I could see. I, I would hope for a, a JSA, but again, given the way they're contracting. I just don't know if they have the confidence that that could sell. Yeah. Especially if it's set in 1942. I, 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 and if they did, I, I don't know if it would be just to remember when they announced that Wonder Woman was the actual first hero yes. that was like setting up for 5G. If, if they do do that book, will Wonder Woman be the, I uh, believe in this week's center piece DC of that. Dark Knight's death metal, we learned that the, the kind of how the omniverse works and that essentially everything that's happened happened. So in, in some places, she is the first superhero. In some places, it's Superman, and you, you don't have to worry about that anymore. But that would be an interesting take. I guess you know, she wasn't in 
the JSA you know conference room when they showed up. Mm -hmm. But if they do do that, they could put her in there, and that might be a character. Uh, obviously, with movies coming out, that would up the profile of this. Of the yeah, which yes. would help you know give a yeah high profile character, and maybe some you know, more people can finally find out what we know, which is how great a writer Venditti is. And I want to say real quick, I didn't learn this until last week. I read this and thought, and this is, he must have been a Hawkman fan his whole life and finally got to tell his story. No. Found out he didn't know anything about the character when he took the assignment. Yeah. And he still writes the best version in 80 years. Yeah. He's yeah, my how, personal favorite writer. Same here. Uh, well, starting with, with his work at Valiant, I love his Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern Corps run uh, during DC Rebirth basically perfection there as well if it's not the jsa i i want to see him writing nightwing but i i love dick grayson i think he would do a killer job with dick grayson and really restore the character whatever his next assignment is be a dream project or not i'm in i he he writes it i'm reading it at this point absolutely yeah so if if you're viewing this and you didn't read Robert Mendez's Hawkman, go out there and get the trades, at least for the first three, and I think you will be bought into the series and you want to read it all the way through. And if you are a Robert Mendez fan, let us know in the comments section, what do you want him to write after this is over? Now that you know he's working, go, what what do you hope his dream project is? I imagine we're going to get some Superman, but let's get some other ideas out there and uh, we'll see who's right in the end. Uh, Eric, thank you so much for joining me today. This is a lot of fun. I, I love talking about uh, great comic books. And I'm glad we got to do this today. Yes, it's, it's nice to talk positively about something in the industry you know, today. Absolutely. We'll, we'll do more of this. Sounds good.